Dark Skies, the Nemansk Incident. Welcome back, everyone. If you want to try the game for yourself, there is a link in the description, as always. This recording will sound a little bit different than the ones before. And it's been quite a while since the last time I played this game. This time I'm recording um, directly as I play the game. Previously I would record gameplay and uh, eventually I would record a voiceover for it, maybe a day later or so. So there was always like a bit of a discrepancy, a bit of a delay. And that's because with the um, Microsoft game overlay, I couldn't record audio while playing the game because it would sound like I, would, like I was speaking through a tin can. There was no way to fix that. But I'm using the NVIDIA overlay now. So let's see how it goes. Wow. I understand that this level has uh, radiation and anomalies in it, but the LUT filter, the lookup table filter for it is really aggressive. I mean, look what the flashlight looks like. It has like a pink tint and everything. It's an interesting look, don't get me wrong, but it's really aggressive. Also leave it to Duch and Kyuk to use GameGuru's sprite system without it looking awkward all the time. Like this looks really cool, really toxic. So let's get going. Glad to have you along for the ride. Oh, wonderful custom A as well. Perfectly aligned scope too. I always like that Duch and Cube uses these uh, shader effects that are in Game Guru to such a good to such a good effect. Effects for effect, great English there, but you know what I mean. Whoa. This looks very organic, it's a really nice touch. I understand that these levels are inspired by the uh, laboratories in Stalker, but uh, Duch and Kyuke really gave them his own spin and his own atmosphere. Kinda creepy. Let's be drawn to the light, to the light, Jesus. <laughs> Spooky guys, or of his zombie models. This game has a lot of spooky little ideas that kind of come out of nowhere and are a lot more inspired than any Game Guru game has any reason to be. That's why I like it so much.
This looks cozy enough. Time to rest a bit. <laughs> I must be under the influence of something because this is the least cozy place I can imagine. Like picture yourself sleeping here with these undead skeletal creatures outside just in this bunker. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Now we're in the underground passage. You might have noticed that I uh, skipped two of the previous levels. That is because um, there's the convoy level and it, um, it's a bit experimental, it tries something new. And I played it already like four times and I personally feel that it's a bit awkward in a few places. Which you get when you uh, make an indie game, you try out a lot of things and not everything sticks for everyone. So. I hope you don't mind. Also, the uh, quarry level has a lot of mutants running around, but not that much gameplay, and I think this level is a lot more interesting to showcase. So yeah, let's go. It also fits better with the previous level, I think. This lift is actually moving, which is cool. Or maybe the walls are moving, I don't know. Making interior levels in Game Guru is really difficult to do. So I really appreciate the effort that went into this to make it as atmospheric and stalker-like as it really is. I think I'm supposed to go over there. So let's explore over here a little bit more. I have a bit of a gripe with this gun with this gun design because it's really close to the camera. And to me this looks like I'm holding the uh, rifle to my cheek. <laughs> but I know that this is a matter of style and taste because the I remember Crisis 3 had the guns really close to the camera too. Like I feel for the AK it's a lot better. There was a prompt to pick up an SKS, but I guess I just got the one I already have.
There's a lot of fog with the special effects. This Mish, he's a different world. I have been around the world, many years of experience. And this place is like nothing I ever saw. Is just really well designed. It's kind of reminiscent of the Stalker movie from the 70s, if you've seen it. The way this bunker looks. I wonder if that was the inspiration. Mutants in the fuck world. Now oh, that's a cool reload animation. I think these guys are supposed to look like dead, dead versions of the player character. Expect a lot more oom from like a desert eagle. But fair enough. I think the AI bugged out for these guys. Whoa, no, it didn't. <laughs> Guess I'm gonna run away. Bye bye, Sukas. You really have to make special mention of the sound design in this game and the voice acting. It elevates everything. Why did I never question this whole contract? If there really was a meteorite, why is everything intact? What did really happen? So my questions unanswered. My mind is all foggy, and I feel very strange. I hope I can get to the camp. I need some medical treatment.
I really enjoy the custom animations some of the guns have. The reason I say custom is because some of the guns have animation sets that you can buy, but others are exclusive to this game, which I appreciate. Which I appreciate. Scientist over here. Who's that? It's me, Dunchuk. Seems like I finally found you guys. <sighs> well, the rest of us. We were able to rescue part of the crash scientist group, but we lost quite a few people now, and even the commander has gone missing. I will search him, but I need some medical treatment first. I'm not in good shape at the moment. Sure, go see the doctor. This mission is hell. Nobody knows what's going on. I can tell you what's going on. There is no meteorite. It must be something else. Something that can communicate with humans. Creatures are appearing everywhere. And I keep seeing a strange hooded man with a bloody face and white eyes. I'm not joking. All right. Yes, you are not the only one who has reported this. There is something going on here, and we will find it out. The contact to the headquarter has been interrupted. I don't know why. Anyway, you go see the doctor now. Get some rest. Yes, take care for now. And you. Must say, I know this level also has really aggressive lots, but this looks just cool. Like this organic cave with the light flap falling in, the tree. Little scientists taking some readings. A random fridge. Everything works in this map. <laughs> Probably can't break this, but I'm trying anyway. Nah. Not sure if you can hear it in the video, but it's like a really cool beat in the background of this level. Of course, now that I mention it, it goes away, but... <laughs> mm -hmm. Sit down, Wiesenau. You need a rest. The headquarter updated me on your progress before the connection was lost. Good. I need to take a break. My mind is all foggy. It seems like whatever I encounter in this damned place wants to take my soul from me. I treated the other squad members as well, and they reported similar issues. Just lay down and relax. I will deal with that. Thanks, Doctor. I wonder how he will deal with that. Like, what is he giving me? Probably some good shit. <laughs> oh, you're awake. 
Good. Seems like you really needed some sleep. How long was I asleep? Fourteen hours, and you won't believe what happened in that time. The headquarter contacted us again and has sent a rescue helicopter to get us out of here. Problem is, the commander is still missing, so I have no other choice from send you out into the wild with one of my scientists to search him. Okay, I can do that. I feel a lot better actually. Staying in this area is dangerous, and now I think I understand the origin of the mutants. Could it be that the mutants are just people who couldn't leave Nemusk early enough? They all have a human shape, as if they were normal people before. But I saw really horrifying ones also. We cannot stay here for too long. Or we will be consumed as well. What do you think? Nothing is impossible, that's all I can say. Your theory sounds very unlikely, but it is 100% sure that we have a force here in Nemansk that is not studied and also something that has never been seen before. No wonder this is a secret mission. The world would freak out. But for now, let's focus at our task. Talk to Alexei, he's going to join you on your mission. Alright, thanks Doctor. Now let's find Commander Varabi. Alright. Now I know that many people, especially those with a short attention span, um, really don't like story dumps like this, but I enjoy this part the most in like little indie games, storytelling. And I also appreciate that there is an attempt to um, explain what is going on around us. Because I'm pretty sure that in the first versions of Dark Skies there were simply mutants because there were mutants. And now the game is throwing out theories as to why that may be. And it's also framed like an unreliable narrator because this is just uh, Vizino's personal theory. So we may never really know. <laughs> Guess what I'm trying to say is that I like that there's a lot of plot development and a little bit of scripting to make that happen. Even if it's just voice over over a black screen. I still think that it's cool that it's there rather than just level, you shoot, level, you shoot. Let's see what's next. Quickly, as it has arrived. Pretty warm today. Okay, let's find Sergeant Warabi. Headquarter, are you there? Vizinov. I reckon that you and the squad have already met? Yes, and I am now looking for Sergeant Warabi, together with a scientist. Okay, but keep in mind that our evac chopper is on the way. You don't have much time. The month has become too dangerous. We all need to find another solution. Let's get you guys out of here. Satellite scans have finally located the impact site, but it was not a meteorite. It's an unknown object by the size of a building. Okay. Well, we will see. I will finish the research while you're in the field. My EV scanner also detects metallic material. I can help you find military equipment if needed. That's good. Let me know if you see something. Uh, I appreciate the scripting that went into this, but when I play a game, the last thing I miss is like an escort mission. Follow me. Let's but go. Okay, lead the way. Let's see how this goes. Well, he's following me, so that's already something. This will also be the last level of this episode, because... I have evening classes later. But I'm glad you were along for the ride. Hope you enjoy the game.
Those are enemies, I know it. See what's up on that tower. So we are looking for command of our bay. Let's see if he's up here. Nope, but there's a gun up here. Yes. Oh, nice. That's a cool model, I appreciate that. Check out the reload animation. Nifty. I'm going to follow the road because I assume that's the fastest way to find the commander. Daroga in Russian. Hmm, nothing over here. I personally think Duch and Cuke should upload the soundtrack for the game to his YouTube channel. That would be really cool. There are a lot of little atmospheric tracks in it. Some kind of structure over there. Unfortunately, my audio recording has cut off here. I'm not really good at making videos, so um, I'm sorry for the inconvenience. The level is almost over at this point. All right, I have to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike. And I'll see you all in the next one. I'm letting the footage play out. Thank you. Bye bye. My EV scanner has detected military equipment nearby. Good. Let's take a look.
is the commander. No trace at all. All right, the chopper has landed. It's time to escape, Vizinov. There's a massive radiation storm approaching. Something we never saw before. Move it, soldier! But what about Vorabier? Get out of there! This is an order! You got the black boxes. That's all we can do at the moment. We are losing too many men here! Move it now! Since when do you know how to fly a helicopter? I've been a pilot for three years. But on the ground I'm more effective. Huh. You're really one of a kind, Vizinov. Good work, everyone. I know we have lost quite a few 